Hi guys, how are you? Um, I just want to do a quick marking video on how to mark LO7. I'm not going to have an explainer video. Um, you guys will know why I'm not having an explainer video. But um, yeah, I just wanted to have a quick video then on, on marking. So the first thing is I wanted to show you that this layout mark, how do we award that layout mark? Basically, if a student or yourself has, has um, given me the layout of the um, email, then you actually get one mark for doing that, right? And so that's what, what's happened there. Then what you needed to have identified in question in the first required is that um, you need to discuss, obviously, a um, the income the income side so the credit leg which is the income side of the sales transaction right so you know it's debit debtor credit um, revenue so you needed to discuss that revenue element but in order to discuss that re revenue element you have to then discuss the actual asset because the income definition says that um, income is an increase in assets which is what the student has said so they'll get a mark or decrease in liabilities um, that results in an increase in equity um, other than the contributions to owners, right? So, so that, that's what you had to mention. And then you would have had to identify in that situation that this requires me, therefore, to, to discuss either an increase in asset or a decrease in liability, and then you select which one you want to actually discuss now, you see? So so, so um, what, for example, could we add to this solution here is that the student didn't indicate to the marker their determination that because I'm discussing income, then I need to mention asset, right? They just go off and mention an asset. There is half a mark available for the student to conclude that I want, I need to discuss an asset and not a liability, obviously, because we can see an increase or we, we I, I suspect an increase in the on the debtor side of the asset, right? So that's why it's important to mention which which one you want to discuss next, whether you want to discuss asset or liability, because you have two options. So you need to indicate that in this transaction, there is no indication of a decrease in liability. Therefore, I'm not going to discuss that. What I want to discuss then is the increase in asset. And so that's, uh, the student didn't do that. That's what could have been added. But um, the student did do the right thing by then discussing an asset. So let's then go through the asset definition and we can see what marks we can award. So you see, student has said here, an asset is a present uh, economic resource. There's a mark for that, controlled by the entity as a result of a past event. Then, then they've gone and now discussed what is an economic resource. So economic resource is a right that has the potential <clears throat> It has the potential, right? So it's important that they mention that there's the potential to create economic benefits, right? Now, what is missing from this then um, solution is the student did not discuss control. Now, I want to emphasize to you the asset and liability definition never comes out on its own, right? You, whenever you mention the asset definition, I need to see economic resource, I need to see control, right? Same with, 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 the, um, with the liability definition, right? It has to come out together. Or for example, in the asset definition, these three things have to come out together. The, the definition, the economic resource and control definition need to come out at one time. So here, what is missing is that there wasn't any discussion of, um, you see, control. Right. And so control, obviously, you would have mentioned that there's rights. You need to have either legal or some other sort of obligation. Um, and then and then in terms of of economic resource, you could have gone a little bit more in depth um, and spoken maybe about the fact that. Um, th there's an entitlement that is produced and that entitlement can result in either uh, cash or some sort of goods or other types of services. So all of those are considered economic resources. Um, and then they have to flow into the entity. Um, so economic benefits, you could have discussed about the fact that when we talk about benefits, 
it needs to flow into the entity. There must be some income coming into the entity. Um, so that so that was important, and maybe that was not here in this specific example. Uh, but but let's just move on. So then we see, uh, and so basically, if if you guys want to know sort of what I'm referring to, what 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 um, let me just see what I I would like it to look like. You can then scroll. Now I'm back on the solution. You can scroll through here, uh, just a little bit higher. Sorry. You can scroll to through here and see sort of what the discussion needs to be about needs to be like when it comes to an asset definition, right? So this is what um, you should be, your answer should start to look like, right? Um, just, okay. Um, sorry about that. Uh, but then also, what did I want to say now? Um, now let's have a look at the application side, right? So if we have a look at the application side, the first thing that the student mentions is um, that, there's a debtor, right? So I want to award a mark there. Even though the student didn't mention it's on credit, I feel that's enough for me to award a mark that the student is saying that the, the, there is a debtor, right? Uh, then they're obligated to receive economic benefits in the form of money, right? So I'm very happy with that. I can award, uh, you see, a mark there, um, right? Uh, and then they talk about now the thing being delivered. Now, for me, that is more of a past event. And we are still trying to discuss economic resource, right? So I find that maybe what's happened here is we've jumped the gun and went into, um, it was delivered, the toilet paper was, toilet tissue was delivered, as opposed to like just trying to explore that idea of economic resource a little bit more. So maybe we could have added and mentioned something about the fact that there's a right to receive monies um, uh, and and the right to receive monies would have been uh, as a result of the invoice being issued. So the fact that the invoice was given is the thing that results in the in the in the what you call it the right right the the, the right to receive money. So so that we could have mentioned there. Um, so here there is maybe saying, okay, they're obligated to pay. Okay, I mean, I could sort of award a mark there uh, because what I'm looking for is that there's a legal right to payment. Um, so now we're talking a little bit more about control, right? Uh, what I'm not seeing and what we should maybe consider adding is that when a company has this control, they can prevent other companies from collecting on their debt, right? So there's a, there's a, there's a uh, they can create a scarcity around this debt. They can prevent others from from getting this debt. And then the the past event is mentioned, which is the actual delivery of the goods. So I'm happy to award a mark there for the delivery of the goods. Um, other things that we could have spoken about, we could have maybe spoken a little bit more about uh, economic benefits and how. Um, you know, the inflow of cash is actually an economic benefit because, you know, a company would want to use that cash to do certain things in the business, et cetera. So we could have mentioned that a little bit more. So we didn't really explore that aspect as much. And then um, finally, the, the student concludes by saying, yes, there's an asset. Okay, I'm happy with for that. We can award a mark for that. It says, because we have an asset, so basically now they're returning to the income definition. Okay, the student is now returning to the income definition. Say, okay, so now that we have this, um, now that we have this asset, right? We can um, say that there is an increase in asset because there's an increase in this in this debtor. So that is correct. That we can award a mark for. Um, the thing we need to now discuss is how does this relate to equity? So in this for example, um, thing, the student says, okay, there's an increase in equity. I feel that could have been explored a little bit more in that maybe we could even have given um, the um, accounting equation, 
right? And we could have said, okay, this is how it increase. When there's an increase in assets, it's then going to increase the equity. So I feel that could have been explored a little bit more. But the fact that the student has basically indicated that there is an increase in equity, um, um, I'm definitely awarding a mark there. Um, and then it doesn't result from the owners. Uh, that's okay. Yeah, I think we can award a mark there. What I would have liked to see, so how the statement should have been stated, is that Checkers, ShopRite Checkers Limited is not an owner, right? So we, we must say that the person who took the goods is not the owner, right? So I would have liked to see that maybe a little bit more. Um, and then finally, we can classify this as revenue or, or sales. Um, and it's, a, it's an income. So that is basically how we would have marked that first part of the, the uh, LO7. Let's now move on to the next part, which is the FIFO part, right? And so in the FIFO part, what I'm looking for at first is just a description that clearly for me uh, differentiates between the two, right? So I clearly want to see a difference between what is FIFO versus what is uh, um, um, weighted average? That's what I want you to, as a student, to bring that out, to show that to me, right? So, so let's just see then what the student has done. So they say, okay, FIFO, inventories valuation, assumes that um, inventories acquired first is sold first. Correct. We can award half a mark for that. Um, then... Uh, what the next thing is, it means that the value of the inventory in the books of the business is the most recent values paid to acquire the inventory. Now, on that one, uh, uh, so let's just let's just think about this, guys. So, the most recent values, right? The most recent values. Does that make sense? Because remember, FIFO talks about first in, yeah, first out, right? So if it's the first in, is it going to be the most recent value that we use first? Um, means the value of inventory in the book. So maybe the maybe the student is talking about the closing value, the, the, the closing balance. The close the value of inventory in the books is the most recent values paid. Um I sort of like see, I sort of like see what the student is trying to say, and I'm probably going to be just lenient. Oops, I'm probably going to be just lenient there and just award um, a tick, not an X. I don't, the, the X is a mistake. Um, so I'm probably just going to give give that mark there to that student. Okay, so then the next one says, so on weighted average side, it says weighted average. Valuation system uses the average cost of all inventories acquired. Average cost of all inventories. Average cost of all inventories required. Okay, right. Therefore, the value of inventory changes when each purchase or return. Uh, sorry, with each purchase or return, um, when the new average is calculated. Uh, okay. I, I feel like I feel like that's probably saying the same thing. Now, this is an interesting thing, and this is something that you guys need to watch out for when you do your tests and exams. Is on the FIFO side, we mentioned what happens with the balance, right? We said the balance, the amount, the value of inventories on hand, or the uh, closing amount of inventories is the most recent value. So, how can we say that, right? for weighted average. Maybe we could say something along the lines of the closing balance of inventories is measured at the average cost then of the inventories throughout the year. So just to make sure that we are comparing apples with apples. So when the person is reading it, they're seeing the same thing on both, they're seeing the same thing on both sides being compared. Here, I could probably only award one mark. If I'm pushing it, maybe I could award another mark, but I'm not probably not going to, right? Um, Okay, so let's then go for the, remember we said we want arguments for and against. Now, I mean, we, we did this in class. Um, I asked you to do this in class. So I'm expecting that the answers are good here, right? But let's just see what happens. Um, so we say the fair value, oh, sorry, the value of inventory.
Okay, I assume we're back. There was a little bit of load shedding that took place in my office. Um, but we should be okay. We should be okay. Okay. Um, right. So this is what I wanted to say, right? So, so um, we, if we look at what is now said, the value of inventories in the books will be up to date because more recent costs paid for inventories will be presented, right? The so, so basically they're saying the val will be up to date, more recent. Uh, so, so K, um, I'm not so sure that there is something there that I can award a mark to. Sorry for the beeping. It's just, it's just the load shedding, uh, but I'm not so sure that there is something that I can award a mark to there. Um, we could probably argue that what the student is trying to say here is that the value on hand equals the replacement value. So I can probably give them a mark, right? Um, but it's it's sort of like a stretch. So, you know, it's like, ooh, it's like I feel a bit uncomfortable <laughs> about doing it. Okay, so the next thing is the positive effect on taxes, okay? That they will pay because the average cost being used uh, of inventory, the higher recent purchases of inventory will cause higher average price leading to increase in cost of sales and decrease in profits. Therefore, it will reduce the tax payable. So I think what they're trying to say here is it can be used to manipulate tax. Um, and I'm not so sure that that's right. I think you're going to end up paying a lot of tax maybe in year one, and then in year two, you'll end up paying less tax. So on the whole, it will wash out of the system, right? So it's on the whole, it's going to equal out. So over the course of two or three years, whether you use FIFO or weighted average is going to be irrelevant, basically. Okay, so then five, the FIFO method can cause the inventory to be overstated. Um, okay, so maybe they're talking there about fluctuations because usually a high price is paid to record the value of inventory on hand, which would not always be the value that the inventory can be sold for, for necessary future reporting date. Okay, so yeah, I think, I think we can sort of say, okay, um, so, so yeah, the, the first part, I'm happy to award a mark there. The next part, I'm also happy to award a mark there because what she's basically saying, or he, says, he or she is basically saying, is that this um, the, the value on hand might be an unrealistic representation of what we can actually sell this thing for, right? So I'm happy with that as well because because of fluctuations in the market the market might move on but because we're holding on to the old original cost or historical cost we might be holding on to a value that's not relevant right then on the weighted average side if um prices are very volatile the average may not be reliable happy for that um uh, and the figure may work out with valuing inventory, reliable figure to work out with valuing inventory. So I'm happy with that. There might be some unreal, unreliable, specific, specifically with like a specialized or niche item. Um, it might change the way we, we make decisions. So I'm happy to give that one to that student. Okay, so let's then move on to three. So um, required or query three, it was only for two and a half marks. So really, we weren't looking for you to actually write a lot. Um, right? So for example, I wanted you specifically to mention something about there being a prepaid expense 
in the 200,000. I also wanted you to mention that the reason why there's a prepaid expense is because we need to practice accrual, accrual accounting. The accountant didn't make a mistake, uh, right? And the financial asset that uh, Miss Luxury will see on the um, balance sheet is actually this specific prepaid expense, right? And the, that expense that she's hoping to see will actually come next year. So that's what we were hoping for you to say. So let's see what says here. According, let's see what the student says here. According to the framework, an asset is a print obligation controlled by the entity as a result of a past event. Okay. The case of the definition apply in the case of the definition above, apply the year in December because the economic resource exists, UPP will receive an economic benefit in the form of the rental space, okay, in the upcoming year, okay, I can give, I can award a mark there because the payment was made on the 15th of December, okay, I think there's still one mark only there, or half a mark at least, then it says here, therefore, the accountant did not make a mistake. That's exactly what I want to see. By not uh, recording the rent expense in 2022, uh, because there is no increase or decrease in assets or liabilities, and was rather recorded as an asset, which is a prepaid prepaid expense. So I'm happy to see that. But what I'm not seeing is then what then how are we then addressing Miss Luxury's expectation right if you go to the question you'll see i asked there address the expectation or, or the fact that she expects to see you know this um expense and then basically what you would have had to say is there isn't an expense but there's an asset in 2022 and then in 2023 you're going to see the expense that you're looking for right so that um so in this last part, there was sort of it was a dual question. It was a, it was a it was two questions in one, right? Two questions in one were being asked, and th that was what does accounting mean, and then what do accountants do, right? So I was looking for two separate for you to deal with two separate answers, right? And if you did it together, that's okay. We can mark it together. That's not a problem. Uh, but I was actually aiming for there to be two separate answers, right? And then it says the role of an accountant is to ensure that the records of financial, uh, the financial records of a business gives the right reliable picture to the people uh, that need to make decisions. That is fair, right? That is fair. I can give an, um, a mark there. I like the fact that also the, the fact that people who make decisions is brought in, so I can give a mark there. It then says, um, and so basically now how I'm marking this is I'm marking it as if the student has only presented me with one thing to answer both questions. So what is accounting as well as what is uh, an accountant? So so so, uh, that's so that's how I mark it. And that's why you'll see I'm awarding like one mark that maybe comes out of the section that talks about what is accounting and then one half mark from what is um what do accountants do right so i'm, I'm trying to mix it and trying to get a right uh, combination of what the student has done the accountant should help uh, uh others to gain an understanding of the overall well-being of the business and how they are performing okay and then you were asked for an illustration now, this is quite this is quite interesting. Um, when I was asking you for an illustration, I wasn't necessarily meaning a picture, right? Instead, I was actually looking for an example. So an illustration, the word illustration, while it might mean a picture, it's not only it doesn't only mean a picture. It can mean an example, something to illustrate, to demonstrate the concept that you're talking about. So that's what um, what was uh, like a parable almost, right? So that's what was uh, required. Um, not necessarily a drawing or a diagram. If we were asking you for a diagram or for a drawing, we would have said draw, 
right? The word draw would have been there. The word create would have been there. Create a diagram, create or draw um, a diagram or a graphic. you would um, actually explain um, this to a child, right? So in this specific illustration, there's goods and services that are happening. And then there's like, okay, someone is selling something, there's bank, and then a recreate picture of well-being and performance. Um, and, and this is basically the financial statements, right? So I like the fact that there's an illustration of something being sold. I like the fact that there's the illustration of financial statements. But unfortunately, the question wasn't answered so therefore we actually can't award any marks for this section okay so that's basically how you would mark this specific paper um i think the student has done well and um and i think you also would have done well if you if you guys didn't cheat but um yeah so that is our marking video and i will see you again soon thanks bye bye